already got over 70 people um, in the chat, I think. I've got the chat down here uh, on the Chromebook, so I can keep an eye on it. So, um, yeah, hello. Uh, I hope you're having a lovely week. Uh, sounds a bit too much like John Auto Shenanigan saying that. Um, yes, Friday Waffle. Um, so just checking who we've got and from where in the chat. We're up to 87 now. Uh, Southeast Norway, rainy and dark. Um, it's clear and uh, sunny, but obviously the sun's starting to go down here. So it's nice. Sunny, oh, to go down here, hold on. So. I'm, I'm feedback looping. There we go. Uh, so it's just nice. It's been so wet. So very, very wet. And it has been very, very depressing. And I made a big decision today, which I will um, come to earlier. Uh, earlier? No, I won't, I won't come to earlier. I'll come to later. Uh, it is just me at the moment. Miss Hubnut will be making an appearance. At the moment, we've just got her Hello Happy shirt. We've got these pink shirts, limited um, edition, uh, in the store at the moment. Uh, Miss Hubnut is off dropping the hublets to their Friday night evening activities. Uh, she will be here hopefully in about half an hour and will be joining in the live chat uh, as soon as she gets here. So that'll be good. Isn't this nice for she can just jump in a car and go and do things? Absolutely marvellous. I've already been and done the shopping today. Uh, in fact, while we were shopping, we went and grabbed Classic Car Weekly because uh, they've done a very nice spread on Rustable. Uh, so that's Classic Car Weekly on sale at the moment. Uh, I used to work on Classic Car Weekly a terrifying number of years ago. Uh, I left in 2010, so yeah, that's already 14 years ago. And uh, what I love is the logo is still exactly the same. Marvellous. That's a very, very old logo. That title is quite um, old. Uh, so that's all good. Uh, damp in Cardiff. Oh, well, you probably got the moisture we had earlier. It was quite rainy earlier on. Uh, we've got Yorkshire in, Chester um where else are we southern idaho um afternoon there uh always off for meetings it's um that sort of time of day uh hello brian good to have you oh we've got people in from australia even though it's 5 a.m that is dedication hello sir um it's, it's a little later in new zealand but uh, i guess all the kiwis are you you all still in bed you're having a nice relaxing saturday isn't it weird but it's already saturday on the other side of the world uh, someone's testing my Dutch, which is a shame because it's rubbish. Uh, good Navond. Is that, that good afternoon or good evening? Um, I would like to know. Uh, Miss Hubnut will be here. Don't worry. She's just represented by the shirt for now, but she, she will be joining us uh, a bit later on. Yeah, you've got um, Melbourne in as well. Southeast Pennsylvania, Cornwall, Cambridgeshire. Oh, lovely. Uh, Northwest England. Yeah, starting to go dark in northwest England. It's not going dark here because we're a bit further west. We hang on to the light a bit longer. It's about 15 minutes later sunsetting here than London, uh, which is quite uh, astonishing. Um, we've got Somerset, Brongest, is that France? Um, Fife, wow, Biggles Wade, home of Barclay cars. I'd love to drive a Barclay. There were some very interesting vehicles. Uh, Amersfoort in the, the Netherlands. Finland, Norwich, Romania. Excellent. Hello, Tudor. Uh, a long-time um, hub nutter. And Bucharest guided tours, flitting between Romania and um, Scotland. Uh, dry in Pembrokeshire. Wow. Uh, Bradford, Cardiff, southwest Scotland. Wow. Uh, Matt Beale has just reserved his hub nut social um, ticket. That's good. Uh, if you haven't reserved it yet, if you go to the previous video, which was the Rustaval road trip video, uh, there's a link in the description that will take you to tickets. But I'm just going to go and live on the computer now. Go and do a quick check. Uh, I'm going to go and um, log in again. There we go. And we'll find out how many tickets are left. We've got 200 tickets. 152 have been claimed already. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you the link. Uh, it's uh, ticketsource.co.uk. Source as in sourcing something, not what you put on chips. Uh and slash hubnut at the end of that. So ticketsource.co.uk slash hubnut if you want a ticket for the next social in Sirencester. Uh, if you find you can't go, please give your ticket back because we can reallocate. There will be a waiting list. And uh, it looks like we're going to be um, sold out again. I say sold out. The tickets are free. It's just so we can keep an eye on it. Oh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hello. Uh, good evening in Dutch. It is good avond. 
there we go. Or Hoida uh, Avond, I suppose it is. Um, uh, the um, Dutch G, quite tricky, in, in much the way, same way that um, people struggle with the Welsh CH, which is a very hard, <laughs> quite phlegmy. Um, uh, oh, yeah, R Ramadan Kareem from Doha. Uh, it is Ramadan time of year, of course. Uh, Van in Brittany, wow. Gosport, so many people in all over the place. Uh, as uh, Frank Voltius, hello. And uh, Sir Necromancer, we've got some hub nutters in, official members. So, um, yeah, hello. Um, bu -bu 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 oh, Reese, I'm sorry to hear your grandparents aren't well. Um, yeah, family comes first. Maybe we'll see you at another meet. And uh, I'm now all out of everything. Uh, we got Matt. Oh, we have got Matt Furious driving in. Hello, sir. You you just put a video out this evening, I think, on the um, Rover RDX sixty, the prototype that was lurking at the back of the workshop we had access to at Rustable at the weekend. Uh, to uh, Robert Brink as well. I hope I'm getting that right. I am trying. Uh, I was doing Dutch Duolingo for a time, but that kind of stopped after I went to the Netherlands last time. I should have kept up with it. Um, I. Uh, Jakob is in Bunker Flostrand. Is that close? In Sweden. He has an amazing collection of opals. Um, someone's cooking dinner. Budai Jigai. Oh, no, I don't know if that's right. Korean army stew. Wow. It's interesting to see what people are up to. Uh, Miss Hubnuth will be here. She's currently depositing hublets about the place. So she will be here in about 20 minutes or so. Hopefully, she's got to get milk. We're desperately low on milk. We ran out of tea this morning, and now we're running out of milk. We're do doing a terrible job. I think Rustaville kind of wiped us out a bit. Um, oh, yep, yeah, Wright family are in the chat. They've been basic hub nutters for 12 months now. Now heading home from Rustaville. They're still heading home from Rustaville. Gosh, that was ages ago. Um, yeah, I was going to talk a bit about that. I mean, we'll, we'll probably talk a bit more about it later, but the um, aftermath of Rustaville... Wow, um, we we really had no idea. We knew we wanted to do something a bit different with a show. What we didn't know is that everyone attending would buy into it quite so much. But it was absolutely amazing. We had um, Danny Hopkins, Practical Classics, on the live stage. And uh, he was doing a great job interviewing folk all day. Very, very busy. And we had so many guests, so many lovely channels that we are um, huge fans of ourselves. Uh, th there's loads of YouTubers out there. And I know some are going, well, why weren't we invited? But it's just because we had a limited amount of slots and we just immediately went for some of the channels we're closest with. And there's some of the channels we enjoy watching personally ourselves. Uh, Auto Shenanigans has become absolute must-watch content for me. Um, as soon as he's got a video out, I'm watching it. Same with Kitsch. Uh, Whiteland Restorations, even though we frequently pop around there and have a chat, I still like to see what they're up to. Uh, it's crazy times. So um, the beauty of it is, if, if there are more Rustables, and we're still at the stage where we're going to have a meeting to discuss that fairly soon, uh, obviously you can, you can change the guest list every single time. That's the beauty of it. Oh, thank you, Paul. He's donated for the tea and milk. A very good cause indeed. Uh, Sid3300 uh, says he's impressed with how Cecily looked at Rustable. Oh, yeah. Um, the uh, Cecily has come on so much. You, you don't want to know how much has been spent on Cecily. Uh, the current owner, Phil, who I sold Cecily to, has spent a lot of money bringing Cecily up to scratch, and I couldn't be happier. It's so nice when you sell a car and it goes to the right home and it's a happy ending. Uh, the Rover 45 V6, although I sold it to a good friend, it passed through a few more people. Amusingly, those two were trading cars at the weekend between themselves as well. Uh, and then ended up getting broken for spares by someone else. And that is a terrible shame. But that is the trouble with Banganomics. When you're dealing in the bottom end, um, the cars are only sort of one fail or one bad owner away from being scrapped. And uh, so many of my former cars are long gone. And that's a sad fact of life. Oh, Retro Matt, talking of Rustaville. Uh, he helped us organise it, gifted five memberships as well. Thank you very much. Oh, Reese Thomas has got one. Beautiful. And Sid, 3300 indeed. So, oh, and Frank Voltius is jumping on the um, gifted membership bandwagon. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, very kind of you all. So that means these are now Hubnut members. They can use the emojis. So if you put colon T colon, you get our unique T 
um, emoji and there's a load of others talk ellie there we go uh finley's kindly posted up what they are we need to come up with some new ones we need a shemmy one uh so um yeah thank you very much that's really really kind and you get access to our weekly videos we do a two minute video for our channel members and our patrons every week uh, we failed last week so you've had two this week so if you are a channel member go to the membership tab on my homepage. go to youtube.com slash hubnut you will find all the old videos which you can now catch up on uh so yeah very kind thank you uh sid asks if the stage parts of rust of all were recorded they weren't uh, the, there's quite a lot of technical challenges to record that and get good sound and uh, I know White and Restoration's recorded their stint but uh, it's kind of more for their use uh, the sound isn't really good broadcast quality if we were going to do it in future we would need to have a camera set up permanently just to um, watch the stage but also you'd need a way of recording the input through the stage which is something I think we can look at in future but of course it always gets more expensive when you start ramping up that sort of stuff. It would be quite nice to get to the stage where we could live broadcast that. But again, these are all vaguely possible feel things. It doesn't mean it's going to happen uh, the next time we have a Rustable. Assuming we do. No firm decisions yet. We'll be meeting soon to discuss. But um, it, it's hard not to get caught up in the excitement after that weekend. Uh, let's see. So many people. Wow. Um Matt Walker, what are the plans for Tuck this year? I'm not doing very well there. Tuck's plans for last year were meant to be um, make her better. We just haven't had a chance um, to get on that at all. Got slightly distracted by a Pajero, but it's now slightly stalled as well. Um, Griff Lane says we need a Giselle emoji. Yeah. Some of the cars, unfortunately, the artwork, it doesn't turn out well in an emoji form, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, and left, yeah, we would love to be at Russell. It's quite a long way from Sweden. That's very true. We did have people from um, Belgium and the Netherlands at the show, but the furthest travelled was actually from Aberdeen, didn't even cross the sea, and uh, still managed to cover about 950 miles, I think, there and back. So that's why he won that award. Um, any news on Hubnut versus Bella? Bella is off the road at the moment. Um, we, we've got some things to do. She she will be starring in a video, but I hope will be out on Sunday. But uh, yeah, we, we'll um, we, we'll see. Um, can Miss Hubnut drive Bella? Physically, yes. She has driven around a car park, but um, uh, in, with Bella off the road, no. But uh, we are working on an insurance plan. I can't add Miss Hubnut to my policy because she hasn't got enough driving experience. So we're going to see if we can do short-term insurance, something that means she can drive various cars on the fleet. And she has her eye on Giselle, I have to say. So stay tuned, folks. We're trying to make it happen. It just isn't as easy as we'd hoped. Uh, anyone else noticed the number of Took models in the shop at Gaiden? I didn't even get inside, but it's a standard model by... Um, oxford diecast so we've been sending them through the store with a little card on until we ran out of cards i think we've still got a few took models left but we haven't got our limited edition cards anymore um but uh, there was first a run of a different reg number on those models and uh, we helped with the information about invocars that they included on their website and that's why there, there are loads of models and that's how we ended up doing a took uh, JDM Snow Monkey, would you do another social gathering at Brooklyn's Museum? Probably not, unless we could get some sort of deal where people got um, better access. Because it was £18 each to get into Brooklyn's, and we found most people didn't even go into the museum. Um, whereas we managed to get it down to £11 at the British Motor Museum, which I think was a good deal for everyone. Um, we, we got a bit for the rustable coffers and uh, people got cheaper access to the museum so that was a good thing so um this is the problem trying to find venues where we can keep the price down we want to keep that ticket price as close to a tenner as we can really uh but have all the facilities and everything we need uh so um the british motor museum obviously had some issues because there was the complication about passes because we had you had to buy your ticket at the museum then you had to go to the rustable site and and get a pass that's so we knew as the organizers what cars were coming and the museum knew what people were coming so that two-sided system was a little clunkier than we really liked but uh it seemed to work well enough on the day so thank you for everyone bearing with us on that uh, alan foster is little miss hubnut doing well with her driving 
pretty well. Uh, the main issue, she, she doesn't have a massive attention span, so um, we're kind of only doing lessons of about 30, 40 minutes. Um, any more than that, and she's starting to get a little bit overwhelmed. But to be honest, her mother was much the same, which is why we discovered it was better if I drove to the nearest town, Aberystwyth, and then she drove around Aberystwyth, and then one of us would drive back, because... Lessons are quite intense, especially when you're starting from zero, which Little Miss Hubner is. So, um, yeah, we, we um, she's coming along, but uh, more more practice needed. Um, have you tried marmalade for insurance? Funnily enough, yes, that's who we're insured with for Little Miss Hubner on Shemi, because again, we we couldn't add Little Miss Hubner to Shemi's insurance policy uh, because of the um, inexperience. So, uh, yeah. It's all coming together. Um, right, I'm going to try and catch up with the questions again. There's so so many. Uh, old classic car, is the GSA a keeper? Not a phrase I'm keen on because they can't all be keepers. Uh, we've now got the fleet T-shirts, grey fleet T-shirts. Obviously, that is a snapshot in time. That is the fleet as it stands right now. So um, that fleet T-shirt may well evolve in the future, but um, they can't all be keepers, can they? You guys love collection capers. But I can't do collection capers if I keep all the cars. I don't have the funds to do that. It, it uh, the, the insurance alone, uh, I was realising, because I, I took Bella off the road, so I haven't got to pay her road tax, and I had Giselle off the road as well. Between them, that's over £500 a year just in road tax, just for two cars, uh, whereas um, Shemi, £35 a year, and Tuck's free. So... Maybe if I had some more older cars, it would be more cost-effective, but then I still have to insure them. I've just had my insurance renewal through. It was terrifying. Jumped up a massive amount, made sure talk them back down again. Uh, yeah, it all becomes a pain. The more cars you get. And I will say, one of the problems with being a YouTuber is it's so easy to justify, I can save this, this will be great content. Uh, Matt Furious, I don't know if you're still in the chat, you're still comprehensively outdoing me on the projects, but... It's very hard to say no sometimes because you just think, that's great content. And then suddenly you've got all these cars and you're struggling to keep up with the work they all need and it starts becoming a bit of a headache. And uh, I certainly feel that most of mine um, are um, in um, more poor condition than I would necessarily like. It's just so difficult. Um, there we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Sid3300 had two hour lessons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was speaking to a, a driving instructor friend of mine. He had the Lancia Fema at Rustable, and he said he does two hour lessons. There's no way we're getting two le hour lessons in. Oh, Peter Burke, thank you very much. That's very kind. A £19.99 donation. Excellent. Thank you. Um, grumpy talk. Unless you lost money doing Rustable, why wouldn't you do another? It, the sheer work. I mean, you may have noticed video output has not been classic hubnut of late. And one of the reasons is just the amount of thinking power and the discussions, the chats we've had online, behind the scenes to make Rustable happen. Uh, it's been exhausting, to be honest. You, you don't stop thinking about it. And in the days leading up to it, I would have said, I'm never doing this again. But then we did it. And everyone had a lovely time, amazing vibe. And then you're thinking, oh, yeah, 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 okay. I just haven't had any of the plus points until this point. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, Sid asks if Betty's tax is high guessing is 400 a year. No, she's about 330, I think. So it's not the best. But uh, there we are. Um, I'm not allowed to sell Giselle until I do a twin set within Decisive, who owns VEP, the Mark 1BX. The Mark 1BX that is older than Giselle is. Strange overlapping. Uh, Gadge, do you have to get business insurance for the cars? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's not really high or reward in this, the strict sense. I'm not paid to drive these cars. There's an income earned from driving them, but it's not the same as some, giving someone a lift and then charging them or carrying materials. But I do have business cover on the cars because I'm driving two people to drive their cars, driving two events. Uh, so, yeah, we do have business insurance, which means it is not cheap insurance. So, there we go. Um, but, but, but. Where is Miss Hubnut? She's on her way. She's on her way. She's dropping the Hublets off somewhere for uh, their evening entertainment. Oh, we got Whiteland Restorations in the chat. Hello. Excellent. Uh, lots of folk who were at Rustable, of course. Uh, Retro Matt, any more bus stroke coach drives coming in? 
making plans right now to do more of them. Yes. Uh, I'm just looking forward to doing road tests again generally because uh, we haven't done any for months. The weather has just been horrendous. Um, right, oh, yeah. Uh, Furious has been offered even more projects. Oh, how do you say no? Blimey. Uh, Griff Lane's road tax, £650 a year. Oh, uh, it's on a Mondeo with a V6 engine, I think. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Uh, Retro Matt, you need to do a Yugo Sana test. I do. And uh, yeah, yeah, there are two of them on the road. And is it about 11 known Sanas in the UK now? Or Florida um, to non-UK markets. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm desperate to drive one. I bought one because I wanted to drive it. But um, as Paul Matters discovered, the white one needs increasing amounts of work, especially now the clutch from it is in his red one. So the clutch from my white Yugo Sana was at Rustable. A uh, bit of a weird one. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Joe Briley, do you plan to keep your current unit? No plans to move out uh, at the moment. Um, oh, Brian is having heading out. Yep, have a great weekend. Bye, Brian. I will say hello to Miss Hubnut when she's here, cause, which should be 10 minutes or so, hopefully. Uh, buh, 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 where are we? Oh, gosh. Lot, so many comments, folks. I'm trying to keep up. Um, Peter Van Hecker, sometimes thinking again about getting rid of Giselle. I have a love-hate relationship with that car. And, uh, yeah. But I will say, Giselle came out today. That will be Sunday's video. Will be um, Giselle coming out in the rain, of course. Of course it was in the rain. And uh, we had a few issues. So um, look out for that in um, Sunday's video. But yeah, I mean, save Giselle, but I cannot keep them all. Something is going to have to give. It was the same with Foxanne. And again, Foxanne has gone to the right home, but uh, not an easy decision to make. Oh, the front wiper motor is in the red one as well. And the front hub. Gosh, there are lots of bits of my white sauna at um, Rustable. Uh, so that's good times. Uh, right family just been gifted a Mazda RX-8, but uh, yeah, insurance uh, tax, sorry, over £700 a year. Yes, those Vankel rotary engines do pump out the hydrocarbons, and that's why they are so scary, and kind of why they were killed off, utterly killed off, because they just couldn't get the CO2 emissions down. So, uh, yeah, very sad. Uh, can you please hello, say hello to our Disabled son, George in Lidfield. Oh, George. Well, hello, George. I hope you're feeling better soon. Um, yeah, I really do hope that. Uh, trying to keep up with the comments. Has Miss Hubnut driven any other cars than Chemi? She's had a very short drive in Giselle just to move around at the unit and uh, Bella around a car park. So that doesn't really count as driving. But uh, we're making plans. Uh, as I said a little earlier in this, um, we are hoping for that. Uh, Stuart Alcorn, are you coming to Festival of the Unexceptional again? Yes, we are hoping to be there this year. A lot of Dutch coming over this year, uh, I'll have you know. So I'm um, looking forward to catching up with my Dutch friends again. And uh, I forget the details of Festival of the Unexceptional this year. It's usually late July. And uh, it's at the same um, place in um, uh, Lincolnshire, Grimsfork Castle. That's the one. Uh, do oh so many comments uh, situation with a pajero is it's just waiting for time uh, we've had very little of it and um, whiteland restorations have had very little of it kind of both of us pre preparing for uh, rustable but whiteland restoration seems to be going through a very busy phase which is good uh, they need to earn money from their regular day job uh, but there's a little bit more welding needed on the pajero and then hopefully we can get into undersealing. Then we can get into the mechanicals. My bleed nipples arrived this week all the way from Japan. I don't know why I ordered them from Japan. I'm sure I could have found something here that would have fitted. But uh, yeah, yeah, we are um, hopeful that we're getting close uh, on that. Uh, we've got a timing belt kit. We've got all the stuff. We just need to make it happen. Uh, Diego's whining. I wonder if that means Miss Hubnut's back. Uh, Peter Van Hecker has his thoughts on the fleet, but here's the problem with the fleet, that uh, everyone has their own favourites, and there's very little overlap quite often. Uh, Betty and Tuck tend to feature quite 
heavily and Ellie, of course, because Ellie's been on the, the fleet forever. But um, similarly, some people are like, oh, Betty, why do you have Betty? Get rid of Betty. And sometimes I look at the fuel bills. Do not ask how much fuel she used on the Rustival trip. It was considerably more than the charade. So, um, yeah, it, it is difficult. Uh, would you ever convert Ellie to... And then Nikki stops, so I don't know what I'm converting Ellie to. Uh, I wonder if EV, but um, I'm not fancying EV just yet on Ellie. I uh, need more range. Uh, Lewis is still grafting as we speak, so yes, it's uh, busy old times. Um, oh, Indecisive Auto, hard-hitting question. What's your favourite type of biscuit? I'm not sure I have a favourite. It's a bit like cars, because all of them have their own wondrous variety. And uh, a rich tea with a cup of tea, perfect. Rich tea on its own, not so much. Uh, digestives, good old classic digestives, you know. Jammy Dodgers, if you're feeling a bit, well, hey, let's go crazy. Um, but, yeah, I haven't really got a favourite biscuit. I think I just like biscuits. Um, Retro Matt saying he got a quick look at Monica the Volvo. Love the details on it. Yeah, Monica is a car that continues to divide opinion. But I tell you what, I was convoying with Whiteland Restorations for the first two hours of my journey to Rustaville a week ago. It's already a week ago, blimey. And uh, looking at Monica in the rearview mirror, oh my gosh, that car just sits perfectly. It looks so mischievous going down the road. Uh, I really enjoyed that. Uh, Edward Newton asks if the nipper is still on the road. It is not. And uh, I'm afraid... Uh, that did die a couple of years ago. Oh, thank you, Wayne, gifting some memberships. That's uh, very kind. And, uh, yeah. Oh, who's this bursting through the door? With milk and bacon and wine. That's us uh, sorted tonight, then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hamish, will we be treated to another jolly chat with car pervert Johnny Smith? Uh, we, we had hoped to get Johnny at Rustaval, but uh, there was a diary cr clash because um, he's a lovely bloke to talk to, and uh, it's nice to flip the table, because Johnny does so much work um, interviewing other people. So, uh, yeah, are you coming to join us, dear? Yes, sorry. Yes. Sorry. You don't, don't, ha you don't have to whisper. I think someone's quite pleased to see you. Yeah, yeah. I'm very pleased to see me. I'm very pleased to see you. Yeah, yeah. Here comes the real star. What, Diego? <laughs> Ooh. Would you like a microphone, madam? And there goes your tea in bed. Everybody. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> there we go. Um, yeah, so thanks for the yeah, gift of membership. That was nice. Uh, yeah, the, the number of nippers at Rustaville to make up for the demise of my poor old... Um, yeah, there's three of them. We get off the wire. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're breaking <sighs> the wire. Hello. Oh, gosh, I am a mess. Hello, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. And Ooh, here's Diego as well. That's why I need my phone. I was like, why do I need my phone? For the chat, so I can follow the chat. Yeah, we've well, kind of got the chat here. But. I know, but I get a bit lost otherwise. Yeah. Oh, oh Furious is now off on his scout mission. <laughs> Farewell, sir. <laughs> Dibby dibby dob dob things. Um, or something it's like that. It's an evening for it, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, you are out of breath. Did you run up the stairs? Yeah. You know, just that desperate to be involved <laughs> I, with um, this live stream. I forgot my phone in the car, so... Oh, you had to run back. Had to go back. Yeah, yeah. Um, Mr. Stephen Parry from Port Sunlight in the Wirral. There's a username. I know. Are you thinking about swapping your Berlingo for the petrol version? And how the family nice seeing you live? The family's good? They're good, yeah. Yeah, they are. the kids have been absolutely... Uh, if you saw them at Rustable, they were absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, did a great uh, job on the merch so stand all day. Good. And they were pretty much just abandoned and left to it. So they did very, very well. Hello, James and Annie. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you for the hellos. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm just um, like, but Berlingo petrol versus diesel. I'm increasingly coming to the opinion that if you're going to buy a Berlingo, petrol one may not be such a bad idea. Oh, little Marley was trying to talk to Diego. Oh. Hi, Marley. <laughs> oh. He's a bit antisocial, unfortunately, Diego. Oh, cool. Stipolite says, thanks, Lewis. I got videos of Monica's headlight. Colour cycle. Nice. That was one cool Yeah, they cool weren't car. Do, doing that going down the road, thankfully. But, um, yeah, yeah, very, very smart lights. Am I interested in Giselle? Yeah, I think Giselle's going to be the first f other fleet member that I'm going to drive. We've uh, worked her out, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, we've and been talking about our drive. insurance difficulties, but we think we might be able to do that. <laughs> As you have one hand behind you and 
back. What's wrong? Could you please remove it? Some people just don't like the party in the back business, do they? Uh -huh. I love it. It keeps my neck lovely and warm. Oh, Paul, enjoy your dinner and um, we will see you at the social. Yeah, see you at the social. Yeah. Uh, we did mention the upcoming social um, a little earlier. Um, I haven't got the link immediately to hand, but um, you can go and um, look at that. Retro Rich says, uh, great to meet you at Restable. Um, and that's from, oh, it's disappeared, disappeared. Oh, gosh. Oh, Richard, Richard Jay, Lovely Thank to you. meet you guys. It was lovely to meet everybody. I had yeah, such yeah. a nice time chatting away to everybody. Yeah. So thank you for that, <laughs> Richard. He's just gifted another five memberships. Thank you very that's much, very kind Richard. Of you. Crikey. Oh, your Bond Burger was a hit at, at yeah, Restable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, my goodness The blue me. and orange uh, yeah. Bond Burger, amazing yeah. thing. Um, what car did I originally learn to drive in? I learned, and my initial driving instructor was a Mark III Astra. Uh, I think it was a diesel. That, and tells, it, it, that tells you you started a while ago. I know, ago. and he yeah. would say, oh, you can't stall a diesel. Challenge accepted. Yeah, yeah. Then, as as you would anticipate, there was a um, Corsa, mm -hmm. very, very popular um, driver's instructor car. And then it was, I thought it was a Ford, but I can't remember which one. Oh. Yeah. So, yes, there was a few. <laughs> Corsa Beast for me. Um, I just saw a very sad comment. I'm going to find oh, a sad no. comment. Uh, Lee Holden, hopefully, hoping you'll cheer me up. I say goodbye to our first car, a 2003 CRV. Oh, I'm sorry to oh, hear that. Oh, never nice saying goodbye to a car. Whether you're selling it, scrapping it, whatever, the, the goodbye is never a joyous experience. Sid says, why are, you all, why are all your socials and gatherings at least two to three hours away from me? Bad times. Two to three hours away from us as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, was four hours. It was at four least hours. Us, without stopping. <laughs> so... Uh, but yeah, yeah we, we are going to try and get around a bit more. Um, it's finding venues, really, that are just well, exactly just, what we want. Yeah, it's a struggle of venues and also our travelling time because we, we can't often get away as the family for no, a weekend. that's true. The kids are shattered. They're both doing GCSEs and A-levels. Not, not both, each doing mm. um, GCSEs and A-levels at the moment. So they are working really hard. They kind of need their crashing out time at the weekends, not yeah. being bundled into a car, yeah, taken to a campsite. it's a lot. Campsite. I mean, yeah. their youth club this evening is, is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, it kind of ties us to a certain range. Yes. The, the motorist is out of range at the moment. It's a lovely venue. We would love to go again, but not feasible. Maybe we can get up there in the summer holidays. Lots but, of people are asking. Well, but we've, but we've, we've got some big question, summer holidays we? plans as well. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll uh, see what CFC we can do. 1001 CFC says, Miss Hubnut, how do you feel about behind the wheels these days in terms of anxiety? Funnily enough, we were talking about this today, and actually, we I just feel I am enjoying it. I'm just enjoying it. I've just stopped on the way home to take a picture of a sunset. No. Nice. Because I just thought, blimey. In the favourite lay by? No, oh. no, not the favourite lay by the one closer to our run on the flat. The oh, big okay, straight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, where is this social? It is at the Classic Motor Hub in Sirencester, isn't it? It is. Yes. yes. And again, please um, do claim the ticket. They're free tickets. Um, I'm going to remind myself of the web address again: ticketsource.co.uk/hubnut. <laughs> We've had another two claimed uh, during the time we've been doing this. Right, family saying it was great to speak to Carly at Rustable. I loved, I had a lovely time in Friendship Corner. <laughs> I was just talking all day. Had like no voice for about three days, but mm. um, absolutely worth it. <laughs> yeah. uh, Indecisive is super impressed with how you've taken to it. It's been driving over 20 years and I still get nervous and have, have anxiety. Yeah. I've, but you're, you're so cool and, and it's just, smooth. If, I mean, it's like you've been driving for years. I enjoy it. I'm really, yeah. really enjoying it. The freedom is hugely massive. Yeah, I mean, you haven't done too much driving in cities yet. No, we've done, uh, what's it called? Blah, 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 blah. Swansea. Swansea, yes. Um, and I've skirted Vista and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So. And uh, the M5, M42 yes. around Birmingham. Yeah, I've, I've been fraud. all over the place. But, uh, yeah, you're doing amazingly well. <laughs> a green goddess dress. Um, I think it's a, a Joni dress, actually. I really like it. Mm. Um... What's this one? Uh, on your channel, we've done History of Places, which are fantastic. Are you going to do Miss Hubnut Travels and do more historic videos? Wow. Well, funnily enough, somebody is going gallivanting. I'm gallivanting. Um, and I thought I would take the opportunity to try. It's going to be new format, slightly new format. I'm going to go. I'm going to do a Miss Hubnut video by myself. Uh, it's going to be somewhere where I grew up. Uh, it's got lots of history. So there will be history, but there'll also be a little bit of... Um, my stories as well 
Um, and there's a bit of Welsh traditions because there's a Welsh tradition and I'm not sure if it's still hanging in there called Kalenig that we used to do. So I kind of want to put that on a video um, and yeah, show you where my where I, I grew up. Um, and all the little secrets of the place. It's a small village, so <laughs> but it's got a lot about it. Yeah, so, so there you go. That, yeah. that is hopefully happening next week. And now I've said it, it's got to happen it's now. Gotta happen it's now. got to happen yeah. now. Uh, Glenn James, could you and Minnie have not do an engine autopsy? Yeah, again, it's time. Um, we just haven't had a minute to um, even really look at it. So um, we still want to... I, I think I need to get a matching pair of glow plugs and yes, maybe I try it when it's not start. bitterly, bitterly mm -hmm. cold. Those engines don't like the cold, so we'll try and give it um, a better chance uh, in future and hopefully do a follow-up. Uh, Scott Franks has followed this channel for longer than he knows. Wow, that's a long Must time save indeed. up and get to a social. The socials are awesome. Um, as I mentioned in the little uh, member video, if anybody's seen that one, we it's going to be about 200... No, it wasn't in the member video. Anyway, going to be about 200 cars... It's a lovely venue. Food's really good. Loo's are very nice. Um, and it's a good venue. It's got a lovely vibe about it. Yeah, so yeah. definitely come along. Uh, oh, James A has just come over from Furious's um, Rover prototype video. Oh, at the oh RDX did he do that, 60. did he? He oh, did, oh, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Diego, don't be barking. Uh, I think you he need to let Miss Hubnut drive a Daihatsu Fellow Max. Now, there is a Daihatsu Fellow Max van for sale at there the is. moment. There um, is. But that car is actually quite scary mm. for all it's tiny. Oh, look, Sunfire quite PG is scary. getting mentioned. I can't say it. Ah, now, with regards to Welsh spelling, <clears throat> actually very easy because it's a phonetic language. So if you sound it out, you can spell it. Uh, okay, so that's this really big name here yeah. is... Sanfar push gwingish go ger chwyr eid drobwll llan tysili o go go goch. Oh, yes. Yes, that yeah, one. Just slipped my mind. <laughs> Couldn't quite put it together. So, uh, yeah, a very, very silly long name. Uh, up in Anglesey, isn't it? It is, yes, indeed. Mm. And on the trains, it says Sanfar PG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, need to come to the east. We do, we do. But the east is a very do. long way from here. We're, we're very, very west. Any plans for Paul Myrtle? Yeah, we're hoping to get her through an MOT shortly and then she's yeah. hopefully going on I've a big got, adventure. I've got to wash a pump again. It's just finding time to um, actually get that fitted. Um, yeah, that needs to happen. And it's the same with Took. Again, she, poor Took fell behind the Pajero, and, which was meant to be a quick project. <laughs> Apparently not a quick project. Haven't learned the fact it took us a year to do an engine swap on a Daihatsu. <laughs> but there we go. Um where is the best place in South West Wales that isn't swamped by millions of people seasonally? That's tricky. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Gower Peninsula just... Oh, yeah, the Gower is, is... Drives me mad. It gets so swamped. But along here, I mean, if you took a picnic, you could go to somewhere like Sand Rusted. It'd be, it'd be peaceful. Yeah, yeah, or Pembrokeshire. Sand Rusted be... Mm, uh, Pembrokeshire has its moments. And it's very chic at the moment. Oh, okay. Yeah. Don't go to Pembrokeshire. It, it's too chic. Sands. Puppet Sands has a humongous beach yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got a crust cafe there as well mm -hmm. so yeah there are places uh cum teddy can be quite quiet yeah i Sparrow, kind of don't want to Pete, give it away Pete Sparrow <laughs> was there recently uh, enjoying the um, peace and everything uh port marion yeah there's mm -hmm. nowhere like port marion uh yeah visit wales out of season is good advice yeah. and then places like you know newcastle emlyn cardigan they're never too, too crazy. Yeah. Although Cardigan, again, has been picked up as a chic place. Indeed. <laughs> oh, lovely comment from Alan Foster. A side benefit of Rust of all, all, all the uh, reports from YouTube as he did not know existed and he subscribed to them. Oh. There were a lot of YouTubers there. There were a lot not, of YouTubers. Not just our invited guests. Yeah. There were so many of them um, joining in. And it's great. Everyone getting caught up in um, all the merriment. Yeah, it was beautiful because everybody was, there was a lot of film and there was a lot of photography and everyone was really respectful of it. Yeah. So I thought that was fabulous. Oh, oh. yes. Talking of Poppet, Whiteland Restorations, Cars and Coffee. Oh, yeah. Poppet sounds last yes, Sunday yes, of yes. the month. Must get to another one of those. Um, took, Ami, took to one Ami uh, Adventures two years ago. is asking, is there EV charging at the social? Um, I don't think there is. Well, how about we check and we uh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll message we'll you look later. Into it. Oh, and thank we you, look Chris. Look forward to seeing you, Ami Adventures. Very kind of you. Oh, thank you very donation. much. Now, I think I just saw Wright family say, mate looked at the midget and apparently it's rotten. I'm not shocked, <laughs> but it is super cool. One day I'm going to have one, but I'm going to import it. Oh, that's gonna... midget. Yes. And then I'm going to cover it underneath with everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, oh, I'm loving this. Sid says, discovered John Copeland because of Russell and his Rover 75. Yeah, yeah. 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 Brilliant. And his dad, and they've just started a new uh, sort of avenue of their channel as well. Mm. There were so many channels there. It was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, the, the big channels we had were JM, Auto Shenanigans, and number 27. Jack, I keep calling him Project 27. I'm sorry, Jack. <laughs> number 27. But then we, we had much smaller channels, Wrenching Wench. Mm -hmm. So you've got a little Lomax that she's working on at the moment. As yeah, well as yeah. Her Audi and her uh, Volkswagen Scirocco. Yeah. Uh, JM bought a Ferrari F12, I think. Yeah. I, I don't actually know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it had a pantograph wiper. They think I it's should all, have asked for a all Rover is asking what's happened to Lego Prime. Our Lego uh, rotates, so there is a Lego Prime Mantis up there somewhere. That's the latest build, and he's yeah. also got the giant Lego man, so we'll bring out some more Lego. Yeah, yeah. Um, but don't worry, Optimus Prime is still fine. He's absolutely mm. fine. Um, Retro Matt would be keen to see a tractor review. This yeah. is because... We, we have done them before. We were in Classic Car Weekly this week. Woo, look at us. And it's taken us till now to get this. Yeah, because, yeah, it took us a while. Uh, every news agent has tracked magazines in the space of car magazines. Mm. <laughs> oh, no. Clederman says, please don't sell Giselle. Okay. This is the problem. I can't sell anything because nope. every car has nope. its fans. So... Um, we're just going to have to um, win the lottery, I think, and then we can keep everything. Okay. That's I'm fine option. with that. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. Then I can have more Daihatsu. Uh, Scott Franks, if your favourite stop in Devil's Bridge is still open, might have to make a visit and indulge. Uh, is that Sarah Bunton's? Uh, oh, the chocolate. Yeah, the chocolate. Yeah. She does very good chocolate very in Devil's good chocolate. Bridge. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is actually a real. Um, upsurge in quality eateries around here at the moment yeah i mean oh we had a surreal moment was it yesterday yeah yeah we popped, popped to the to west coast there. burgers in penrith Shan, which is our favorite spot at the moment and um somebody came up and said oh i follow you on twitter i was yeah. like oh you're gonna yeah you not me oh my goodness which yeah. just reminded me there's brownies in my handbag. Yes. Oh, my God, we tonight has got better. Excellent. <laughs> not, not that we seem to have time for dinner at the moment. Ding, dang, do. Carly needs a Daihatsu Shira GTTI. Ooh, like the one that was at that Rustable. That would be a lot. Didn't even get to that corner of the show. Glad <laughs> people... Oh, no, it's not a GTTI. Yes. It's an Avanzata that's for sale on uh, eBay at the moment. Ooh. Oh, you've seen it. I showed you. Even more fun. Um, so we got uh, a... Matt Walker, did you get the tiny engine working? No, we no, haven't had a chance to do yeah. post-mortem yet. Uh, I'm going to try and get another glow plug. Um, Alan Singfield says, Carly Ian, my dad and I came to the Russell and enjoyed every moment. My dad saw every car he owned pre-2010. That wow. was the beautiful That's thing lovely. about it, wasn't yeah, yeah. it? Um, I got nearly everyone, but didn't see a Fiat Bravo. Did we see a Bravo? There wasn't a Bravo. There was a Stilo, but there wasn't a Bravo. Or a Citroen Visa with satellite switch. There were five Visas. There were five <laughs> Visas, but I think they were all later ones, including a GTI. Very rare. Yeah, we didn't have a... There was a C15 with an early pug snout on it, but it, I don't think it had the satellites. Oh, I noticed earlier somebody said that they clocked Mini Hubner looking at the Lotus Carlton. He seemed to be interested. That's he only his favourite car in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Absolute favourite uh, car in the world. Question. Peter Burt, was Classic Car Weekly ever what I call a regular magazine? Yeah, uh, clues in the name. It is a weekly magazine, uh, albeit on newsprint. And uh, I worked on it 14 years ago. Terrifying. Uh, blah, 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 Scouts blah. and first now brownies. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but these are the edible ones. That sounds uh, wrong. Alien Williams is very keen to tell us he's cancelled his membership. Oh, I'm he's sorry. He's to told that. us many times. I'm sorry, Alan. Yes. But, uh, there we are. It, these things happen. We're not going to force people to be membership. No, absolutely not. And you can yeah. watch for free. That's yeah, absolutely yeah. fine. Um, Peter Van Heck says, What are the kids' plans profession wise if they already happen to know? So we have Little Miss Hubnut would like to be. A police officer although she's got a slight leaning towards her media stuff as well yeah uh and then mini hubner would like to be an engineer of some description mm -hmm. we haven't quite narrowed down the what kind but that's no what it, it, it ranges from su carburetors to rocket science yeah it does. It does. anywhere in that yeah that little that little area of it making things he's what was it he yeah. wanted to be astrophysicist astrophysicist yes. yeah yeah <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Lotus Colton is such a sleeper. Well, apart from the big body kit on it, yeah, maybe. I, I think it'd be more fun to get a 1.8L and put the Lotus stuff in it. 
Oh dear. That'd be very funny. In that horrible sort of blue that looked like it was <laughs> crust in your hands. That'd Grumpy be Talk says, will the women drive a social club be attending your social so we can just decide if Mrs. Grumpy is driving or me? They're they're not actually. Um there's a lot coming up for the WDSC. Uh, there's going to be a Southern Weekender and a Northern Weekender. And we're busy. now getting invited along to loads of events yeah. as well, which is awesome. Um, so, yeah, if you don't see them at the Hubnut Social, I'm sure there will be some of them there anyway. Um, you will see them everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Take it over. There we go. Oh, Frank Waltius would rather have the Carlton 3000 GSR. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with you on that. I don't want Lotus Carlton power and performance, really. The, the um, 3000 GSI with a digital dashboard, that's the one for me. Uh, Griff Lane says, if you could choose any one of your parents' cars, if money and storage were no object, which would you save? That would oh. be my dad's CX Familial. That spaceship that everybody still remembers all these mm. years on, that would be the one that I would save. Um also, just because it was the only new car that we ever had, um, it would be our Zafira as well. Because mm. it was the first new car. We always had rubbish cars. Yeah. Um, so to have a new car, I think, and bear in mind this is probably late 90s, I think before we got the Zafira, my parents had wedged all seven of us into a Renault 5. Yeah, we, we had six of us <laughs> in a toilet Samba at one point. That wasn't very pleasant. I still love that Samba because it was so soft and comfortable when we weren't all crammed in it. Yeah. And, oh, scooch uh, him up it. But, but the car of my dad's I'd most like to save is probably, I mean, it's gone. This is purely um, metaphorical because it was scrapped mm. many years ago. Uh, it's a Lynx Bronze Montego Estate 1.6L. Had a very nice stereo in it. Prodigy mm. sounded very good through the cassette player. Scooch him up it says, Shemi Scratch Treatment is go. Now have oh, paid. That's very, thank very, you, very excited. Muppet. Thank you yeah. very much, Scooch up it. Now we just need to get Scooch him up it to the car. Uh, Grossach asked, Mark One's Vera. It was on Y plate. Yeah. Yeah. Mark One's Vera. Yeah. Fairly early one. Uh, bu- 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 bu. Have you reviewed Peugeot 309? Was my first car. No, I did own one many years ago. But it was the old Simca engine. And uh, there was someone at the social we did at the Motorist who got a 309 GTI Automatic, one of the Japanese spec ones. And I had driven one of those many, many years ago as well. Um, good cars at 309, vastly underrated, especially the GTI. Everything a Peugeot 205 GTI is, but without any of the um, madness of the following. Wait, says I bet people were dying to get in the hearse. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> What would be the most hubnut barn find, Matt Walker asks. Oh, gosh. Oof, that is a tricky one. A barn full of Invercars? barn full of Daihatsus? Yeah, Citroëns, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or just imagine like a selection of microcars. Yeah. Johnny Smith did a good find, didn't he, where he had those microcars in various states of disrepair. Mm. Yeah, that was exciting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lots of... Uh, people talking about cars they'd love to have back yeah and cars they'd like me to drive like yeah. peter van hecker wants me to test drive a renault 17 or a 30 v6 now finley says chance we, of finding one is the problem finley there, says we need a review of a course of b but we've done we one we did one yeah, yeah. <laughs> my mum and dad's one <laughs> so yeah it, I, I did actually it's film it's a straight review on it as well as borrowing it for festival of the unexceptional yes, yes um last year no updates on myrtle um acquiring parts uh, I've got a replacement. Oh, nice. Pump. Everton Short says we got eight into a Metro. <laughs> Me and my mates once managed to get 12 of us in a Metro. Would not recommend. That was not a very good idea. No. And me be like when I was a little bit old, oh, close your ears, mum and dad, if you're listening. When I was a bit older and uh, going out and whatnot, I used to be the person shoved in a footwell because I'm the smallest. <laughs> get a bongo instead of the bilingo. Yeah. Bongos are repeating, may have a bongo test lined up. Yes. Um, the big problem with the bongos is they're very good at cracking cylinder heads Ooh. and uh, blowing head gaskets. But I suspect that's because people just go, it's a reliable Japanese car, I don't need to change the coolant or anything. Uh, Martin Cooper's dad also had a Hillman Hunter. My dad had a Hunter. Uh, it was a Topaz limited edition, which we didn't really realise at the time. And um, mics are breaking up intermittently. Oh, oh dear. No. That's bad times. These have been so reliable. I did a video today, I recorded a video about these mics being really good. <laughs> so is anyone else having sound issues? After you've broken the uh adapter Broken the adapter twice. twice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> 
Oh, goodness Just me. make sure we're not competitive now. touching anything on them. But Steve we Wilkinson says we've had Ted in a minivan. It was very cosy in the back. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there must be more bongos in the UK than Japan now. I think that could well be true. Yes. It is not fun in the football, uh, indeed. What, what car posters did you have on your bedroom wall? Uh, Lee Holden had a Panther 6 and a Lamborghini Countach. I did have some Ferraris and stuff like that. 288 GTO is a beautiful car. But I did also have cutouts from Auto Express that included the road test of the Vauxhall Frontera. Oh, did you? Yeah. Ah. And I cut up an LDV Vans brochure. <laughs> I'm not even and I had surprised. that had that on my wall. I'm not even surprised yeah, yeah. a little bit. Oh dear. <laughs> Uh, Big Clive's live streams often have glitches and audio oh. breakups. Oh, maybe it's not oh, our mics yes. then. Maybe it's just YouTube being YouTube. So Nigel Kirkham says, engineering would be a great career choice. My daughter, who I stayed with for Rustable, is an engineer at JLR. Mm. Awesome. So proud of her achievement in a male-dominated industry. Oh, tell Excellent. her, very, very well done from yeah, me. Yeah. The more of us that are everywhere being noisy, the better. Yeah. <laughs> I did see someone saying that um, doing engineering at a degree level is not very hands-on and it isn't um i did engineering mm -hmm. at college and uh, flunked it didn't didn't get through that because uh it's an awful lot of theory an awful lot of mathematics mathematics is something i'm particularly hopeless at so uh but he's quite good at that as well yeah he's very so he likes the hands-on but he's yeah he's, quite academic as well he is very academic mo saying that they have also spent time in a foot well it is not fun no <laughs> uh Oh, blimey. There's so many. I'm trying to keep up. Oh, Frank had a poster of a Lancia Fema <laughs> and a Lancia Gamma Coupe. Oh. That's classy. Right, family says, uh, I remember breaking down on them 11 in an estate bluebird when police turned up and dad got in a lot of trouble when seven kids got out as well as my dad. <laughs> That's what ended the Renault 5 was the oh, police dear. stopped us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what was that? Mike and his moggy Lucy. Mm. Would you ever import a car from France that is mega rare here? I would love to. Mm. Yeah, very much. I'm quite taken uh, by the Simca Sank, which is a Fiat Topolino built by Simca. Oh, okay. And then I'm we can drive down to Wyland and park it next to their Fiat Topolino. <laughs> they can be friends. Yeah, friends. Friends. <laughs> but, there are, yeah, there's a whole host of um, French cars I would love to buy, but are still fairly plentiful. Um, anything Tolbert is getting very rare over yeah. here now. Matra Rancho? But I think they're getting rare as well over there now. Uh, James says, my mechanic's friend's daughter is trained to be a mechanic at college. She built a Volvo 240 with a VAG 5-cylinder diesel in it. It's her first car. It's rather good. Yeah. Yes. Loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. Um, I hope you all enjoyed meeting the WDSC, the Women Driver Social Club at Rustaville. Um, they are formidable. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the, what, one of the sectors segments we had on the live stage was auto women, and uh, we got um, uh, Katie Ranching Wench was up there, Becca from the Women Driver Social Club, mm -hmm. and Claire Brooks talking about the classic car loan project, which is another which amazing isn't thing. Isn't technically women mm -hmm. specific at all, but uh, Claire heavily involved with it, and she owns some amazing cars, including the Ford Model A that was at the show, and uh, the Flying Sausage, the MGA, and in Alamo Mavis. Beige, and Mavis. Mavis, yeah, yeah. yeah. They got some amazing vehicles. Yeah, I think they've got thirty-one at mm. the moment. <laughs> um, there was a question about Fiat Topolino. Are the Topolino and Five Hundred related anyway? They look like they're built on the same kind of platform. The Topolino is the Five Hundred, effectively the first generation. There's the Topolino era Five Hundred uh, by Dante Giacosa. I apologise for the appalling pronunciation. Uh, he designed that. He, I think he was still in his teens. He was certainly a, um, a young man when he designed that. A perfectly scaled down four-cylinder motor car. Then he designed the Fiat 500 Nuova, uh, the rear-engined one for, with the cutesy looks, which is completely different. has the engine at the back, only two cylinders. Also did the mm. Fiat 600, uh, a remarkable man. And he designed the end-on um, gearbox transverse layout for the Fiat 128. So a remarkable engineer. So he might not have been the first to do that, but he made it work really really nicely and everyone has followed the unequal length drive shafts all of that um was kind of him you know, first seen on the auto bianchi primula i think mm -hmm. which i think was 1964 retro matt says might have the lacopili skoda for mot for the social is that the one you bought along last time mm. with the awesome little carrier 
I am weak for little details yeah. like that. Absolutely weak for little details like that. Uh, Scooch Muppet says that they had a Pontiac Firebird and the tennis girl flashing her bum. I had on Iconic. my walls the female, like the 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 post post that all the nineties girls had on their wall, which was the man holding the baby. Oh yes, even yeah. more iconic. I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, I had it on my wall. I'm I don't sorry. think I had any um, pinups on my wall apart from cars. Cars. Oh. At one stage, I had an entire wall just covered in the road test from Auto Express. All of them. Adrian M, is it funny? Oh, hello. Is it funny seeing Carly driving away and leaving Ian by the side of the road with the camera? How the tables have turned. Yeah. I think he's more bitter about the motorway scenario where um, he was limited to 60 because he was towing and me and Jemmy and Cleo, we just went off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paige Greer. Hello. Oh, Paige, and thank, thank you, you very much. So much. 20 Hubnut 20, membership. Blimey. Wow. Gosh. Oh, yeah. Some um, very familiar names in that list. Uh, Edgar Beat has been a very long time supporter. Yeah. yeah wow. Um, John Grubb says, my granddaughter Amber works with her stepdad at his garage. Brilliant. I'm mm. loving this. I'm loving this. And this is why I'm inspired by women like that to to keep learning about cars and, yeah, yeah. you know, do whatever I can to keep my car running and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, lots. Oh, Sid asks what Betty's MPG is like while towing. Uh, <laughs> about 20 MPG, um, just over 14 litres per 100 kilometres. Not good. <laughs> whereas the other day we, we managed to get 30 out of it did you yeah because we drove along the m4 very slowly the other day shemi did 56 yeah 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 fine 56, fine fine which is very very close to her actual original spec she should be doing 58 <laughs> yeah, yeah uh reese uh so, someone gifted you a membership that's how you're back to being a member again so well done we <laughs> don't we don't pick who, no, who gets no. that it's based on I think something relating on YouTube where it works out who interacts yeah, with the channel yeah. most. So uh, we don't pick who gets gifted these memberships. But, uh, yeah, very kind other members. And I think non-members can do it now as well, mm. can um, gift memberships. Uh, Colin Hamilton says, I noticed a Conway Folding camper parked in my local area recently, but it was totally black in colour. Sort of looked like the sort of thing Darth Vader would go camping in. People are really, really taken with painting them and whatnot. Yeah. Which... Everybody has their own taste. Um, I love origin Bob Original. That's, yeah, yeah. that's what I like. But yeah. yeah, I suspect that's what's happened there is it's been painted. I've seen a lot of black ones and dark green ones as mm -hmm. well. Uh, Frank uh, was asking why I haven't LPG converted Betty. Can't get LPG anywhere anymore. Uh, our local place that did it just doesn't anymore. And uh, you've got A, the cost of the conversion. So you're having to stump up probably around a grand, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then you've got to put the tank somewhere. And, I, you know, we had Betty stuffed to the gunnels for um, mm -hmm. rest of them. Oh, she there, absolutely There was. was nowhere to put a tank. No. I don't I don't want to lose the spare wheel well, so it can't go there. And I don't want it in, in the boot of the car at all. So there is nowhere to put a tank. So it just doesn't work. I just, I'm going to have to live with the cost. Indecisive Auto asks, when is Chevy going on Kitch's Rolling Road? As soon as we can. We might have other plans down that direction as well. Do we? Yeah, we do which hopefully won't end up in the purchase of a car. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If anybody... <laughs> um, Here we go. Mark Adrian Williamson. How does Betty's oil consumption compare to Chemi's? Oh, Betty doesn't drink a drop, ever. Vicious. I never have to top her up between changes. Vicious. It's 10,000 miles. Oil level's still exactly the same place. Amazing car. And <laughs> oil is more expensive than petrol, so uh, I win. No, you don't win. I win. No, you Easily don't win. win. Even if, like, over the, say over the thousand miles, Shemmy's drunk. So a bottle of oil is 40 pounds, yeah? About that. Shemmy's oh. drunk maybe a 10 pounds worth of oil over the thousand miles I've done recently. How no, much no. petrol is Shep, as your vehicle drunk? Moving swiftly on. Yeah. What I were win. you about to say? I win. I forget. Okay. Oh, no. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, if anybody watches Kev T, he um, has a not a recovery truck, what's it called? A car transporter. Yeah. And he collects cars for scrap. But recently he's kind of changed and he's doing the cars that go into auction as well. Um, and they're on Trent's car auctions. And uh, I'm fascinated by that website. I'm so weak for that website. Um, and one of the contributors to that website, we spoke to at Rustable, so we'd love to go and see them as well. Currently on the Trent's website, there is a CX. Mm. Um, yeah, so interesting stuff. 
obviously a disaster waiting to happen. That isn't it? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Uh, Glenn James is asking uh, what you think of the, the Conway in the background of Johnny Smith's barn find video recently. That was the one with the minis. Wasn't it's driving it? me mad minis? because I don't know what Conway it is. Conway were very keen on uh, brown. Yeah, a bit uh, more trailery, trailer tent. I would say, that, yeah, uh, possibly. And I can't, I can't see what it is and it's mm. really winding me up. So I've actually been on the Conway Owners Club trying to identify it. <laughs> um but, yeah, I felt very sad for it. The roof had caved in on it, poor little thing. Yeah. I'm impressed the Mini used to pull it, though. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, Mini with a tow bar. That's quite the sight. Oh, they think it's all Rover says. Athena shot posters for the win. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alan Foster, have you driven or wanted a car that runs on veg oil? I've done both. I actually owned a car that ran on veg oil. A W123 Mercedes 300D that I ran on veg oil. But um, uh, constantly wanted to eat chips. Oh, Bit of a yeah, side. they do smell like chips. Yeah, yeah. Um, lovely smell. Paige Greer says, how did Bob hold up? Good as gold as ever. Yeah. Bob is fantastic. Yeah, and we and definitely we got rain off. rain again. Yeah, yeah. Bob We're is so lucky. brilliant. Such a clever design. Such a clever design. Oh, JJ Cars TV. Are you sure you want me to give this surprise away? What? Uh, apparently, um, he has bought his son some Hubnut merch. <gasps> Oh, so, hello, Jake. Hello, Jake. I hope you enjoy your merchandise. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Matt Walker, love the idea of the friendship area at Rustable. Some people really struggle with social anxiety. Very thoughtful and inclusive. Yeah, there's a reason. That is a subject very close to our heart. I get social anxiety and I got it really bad that morning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At six o'clock in the morning, I was in absolute state thinking, oh, God, I've got to get better to be able to be at the show. So, um, But also... We wanted everybody in. We wanted everybody to have that positive experience. Yeah. We know that sometimes you can go to a show and you can feel a bit lonely and then you might leave or you might sit in your car, get that horrible sick feeling in the pit of your stomach. Yeah. Um, but we made sh we wanted to make sure that everybody was having a chat to everybody. And the amount of people I've said, I made new friends. And it's because we had the Friendship Corner Facebook page going first, so you knew what cars were coming, you knew what people were coming. Yeah. What, oh, there was a huge sense of community from. even before the show yeah. happened. And then people were arranging to meet up and everything, so yeah, nobody yeah. felt alone. And if if you'd managed to slip through the net of the Friendship Corner page and whatnot, you knew, still knew that if you went to the Yellow Gazebo, I was going to be there. Yeah, and yeah. You could come and talk to me. Yeah. You poor. So it's a subject very close to our heart. So um, it meant. It was very much in our minds to do that, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's just because of the sort of cars we cover, the, the the more realistic, shall we say, cars. We're not doing supercars and fancy stuff like that, but we do have a following. That, that there's quite a lot of people who suffer from social anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think because yeah. they're, they're not the sort of people who want to go around flashing. Oh, look at my Lamborghini! No. Uh, so they come from a slightly different angle, and uh, we're very aware that a lot of people, are, like me, have, have that anxiety going on. And also, I think a lot of people, it was lovely that you could bring whatever wheels you wanted. Yeah, you yeah. didn't have that anxiety of worrying about your car. Is it shiny enough? Is it fast enough? Is it old enough? Um, yeah, will just, people laugh at it? And yeah. you're just like, well, no, everything's welcome. I and, mean, and we could hear people repeating our refrains around the show, <laughs> and that was just lovely. We, we, we kind of set the tone. People absolutely ran with it. It was absolutely marvellous. Awesome. Oh, you guys are going to make me emotional because it decisively just said that he was very nervous of coming despite preparing VEP and very glad I pushed past it. Yeah, you, you, that is a thing. You do mm -hmm. have to push through it. You have to try and stamp it down a bit sometimes because um, our brains often just run away with complete stupidity. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they can get away with us. And you just like, well, no, if you think about it for a moment. And I actually went through counselling at one stage for anxiety many, many years ago. And just through talking that out, you're just like, as you're talking about what you're fearful of, you're thinking, but that's ridiculous. That's not nothing to be scared of at all. And uh, sometimes just talking things through just makes you feel better. And and this was one of the beautiful moments. And Griff Lane says um, how much they appreciated Friendship Corner. Mm. Um, and that's it. Just knowing that you're all comfortable and you were happy there makes yeah, me... Yeah so so happy um it, it was so important to us to do that. it was so important very important to, us to do that yeah. well <laughs> peter burt loves seeing the theater sarah owned by sarah yes sarah, yeah, sarah. lovely butterfly <laughs> doors yeah uh, mini hubnut was very taken by that yeah yeah james 
we'd love to see you at a social. We really, really would yeah. with Annie. And, we, we, uh, we don't mind if you come to the social and don't talk to anyone. That's no. absolutely fine. There's no obligation. We're not going to come hunting you down. That, <laughs> that's not how we operate. If you come up to us, we'll talk to you. But, uh, yeah, that, but there's no obligation. If you just want to come and look at the cars, absolutely fine. Not a problem. Yeah, yeah. However, but we call it socials because they are social people do like to talk people naturally tend to form up friendships at these events which we love we'd never yeah. planned any of that no no but but friendship corner has just been fantastic mm. absolutely fantastic yeah, yeah lots of people saying that um they have anxiety and it was so friendly that's what we wanted it can be so it can be so excluding yeah yeah the world of cars if your car's not shiny enough or old enough or if you're not if you don't fit it can be it can feel awful but yeah, yeah. everybody fit everybody mm. fit yeah. and like um lord bungle said everybody's grinning it was amazing yeah it was amazing there was just <laughs> you could just feel this really chilled out vibe around the whole place it was lovely it and was. i think it's because we didn't have huge queues on the way in we put a lot mm -hmm. of thought into that i say we because there's a team of people it's not just yeah the, the, retro mats floating around the youtubers he, he yeah, a yeah huge part of it yeah yeah <laughs> but um it, it works so well no cues so people aren't arriving stressed people are arriving excited and that's what you want yeah uh, uh where are we <laughs> i'm just gonna keep an eye on the time as well because i'm i'm on hublet hublet collect so i'm maybe abandoning you although we're over an hour already aha i've just flies. connected dots and realized who you are um I'm already looking for more Daihatsu brochures. There's a good one on eBay right now, but it's mm. a little bit pricey. Uh, it's a fold-out one that I don't have. Um, should we take a quick second and show the brochures I got this week? Do sorry. we have to? Yeah, we do have to. We do have to. <laughs> I'm sorry, there's just no stopping her now. Uh, None at all. You're showing your bum to oh, the internet. sorry, internet. Sorry if you see my bottom. <laughs> Look, there's your bottom. We can see because we've got a slight delay before it comes back to us. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, and these so, weren't flashing too much. Let me see Daihatsu Sharad. This is the Daihatsu Sharad brochure that arrived this week. And it's 24 pages of sheer joy. And we realised certain things about Sharad's, like the colour palette that there was. The fact that there's two silvers. There's a metallic silver. Mm. Look, two silvers. And we knew about the existence of the pink, but there's a lilac one as well. So. Oh my God, she's become a cardboard. I have. I have become cardboard, I'm sorry. But How no, awful it's been to know really so much about cars, though. To understand a little bit more about Shemi, really. Mm. Um, yeah, and it's a really good brochure. Yeah. I might show you some more on Twitter or something. Maybe, <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, oh, gosh, things are pinging in all um, over the place. Somebody was talking about Shemi. Um, yeah, Fergus, it is, an, it is exactly like that. It's kind of a little Sergeant Pepper esque meets Japan. Yes. Yes. Um, somebody was mentioning about Shemi's piston rings and weirdly enough I've just parked her up and I was pondering the same thing because she hasn't drunk a load of oil um, since no weird, weirdly to here she hasn't drunk anything barely any yeah yeah but, which, which is very very different behavior. but it would suggest piston rings she but we, we did still get a whiff of it the other day where it's particularly bad is if you're coming down a long descent in gear and then you get back on the throttle there tends to just be a poof yeah. Of, uh, smoke out the back. <laughs> There's one spot, so we just won't drive there anymore. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> bikes around Birmingham. Have you ever driven a Skoda Yeti? Oh, we hate Yetis, don't we? We're only joking. Wildland Restorations have a Yeti. Uh, does uh, the yours was at Rostable, and I did spot it in my video. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for bringing it. I'm glad you received positive comments. Does the brochure They haven't really say, replaced the Yeti, have they? Hello, happy on the inner cover. No. Mm. But the thing that did make me laugh is it says on the back, one day all cars will be this green. Mm. When Shemi definitely failed on emissions yeah, yeah. before. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, we're getting asked questions about Kevin the Carrot now. <laughs> on the bane of my life. So that is Easter Kevin up there. Um, Dressed as a sheep. I noticed that he was available. I'm not going to turn around again. No, don't do it. I noticed that um, he was on sale on Thursday and somebody very kindly bought him for me today. The shame. <laughs> Oh, somebody asked about driving a Yeti, and then Whiteland Restoration says, Yeti is a bloody good car. I can't think why they would think that. Mm. <laughs> Strange, it always seems to be on the ramp being fixed. Do you notice that? Ooh. I can't talk about the state of my belief. In the site, <laughs> sent me a link to a potential purchase. Curious to see what sort of noise Ian makes when he spots what it is. Yeah. Especially the engine. I haven't, I haven't seen this. Mm. I haven't seen this yet. 
I'm intrigued to know. Yeah, why don't you have a look? Find the link there. Okay. All right. Demanded. <laughs> oh. Die had to move. Where did they all go? Good question. Ah, don't. So, said auction site had one. Ooh. <laughs> That would be a Volvo S80 with the uh, transverse V8, the uh, Yamaha-developed um, engine. Cool. I tried to think what the road tax is on that. Lots. Lots. I was looking at um, a six-cylinder Freelander the other night. It was a lovely colour, and it's got a transverse six, so it's immediately of interest. The earlier S80s also had the same transverse six engine, built in Bridge End, mm. apparently. Uh, but the road tax was over £700 um, a year. So, um, no thanks. They're all going to vanish because as the value of the cars comes down, the number of people willing to buy a cheap car and spend that much on road tax mm. is going to be nil. Yeah. Um, regards to Hats Who Moves, and somebody said there's one on eBay. So there was one on Trent's auction site, um, and it was not very much money at all, was mm. it? It was sitting on a couple of hundred pounds. And we looked at it, and it had the rear windscreen was missing. Uh, so we were like, no, we won't be able to get that. Yeah. And we just wrote it off. Yeah. And actually, it would have been a really good buy. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's the huge road tax it is killing interesting cars mm. without shadow of a doubt. That I mean, I, I owned a Range Rover Classic when that they were cheap. But um, you look at the more modern Range Rovers and Porsche KNs, I joke about wanting to own just because of the silliness of buying a cheap one and seeing what's wrong with it. Bit of a YouTube cliche. I do apologize. But the road tax is just destroying um, any desire to do that. It's utterly horrific. And I know we shouldn't be complaining. I know there's Dutch people, Irish people mm. going, what are you on about? Your tax is so cheap because they can be paying thousands of euros. But, um, yeah, it just makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, hello, Ivy. I hope you're feeling better now. Um, yeah, Shemi is awesome. I'm, I'm not going to continue to talk about Shemi because... Mm -hmm. I do sound like I'm a little obsessed, and I am a little obsessed. <laughs> Will Silver Grand move on Facebook? Uh, yes, I think I have seen that. They haven't are seen that one. Very, very rare now. We hopefully haven't seen Daihatsu action soon. Not Shemi related. Indeed, so. Mm. Yeah. So say not a purchase, that one. just a, just a test drive. Just a test drive. Mm. Just a test drive. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, James had to pay six hundred ninety-five pounds to tax his Rover seventy-five. Boy, I mean. It's small fry in terms of the fuel costs of a car over a year, but even so, it's hard to look at that and think, mm, am I getting £695 worth out? But you can, of course, tax your car monthly, effectively, so you can reduce it by perhaps taking the car off the road for some months, but then you've got a car parked up for months, and uh, as I'm fast discovering, cars do not like being parked up for months at a time. Thank you, everybody, for certainly saying not in you, a damp unit. You support my Shemi obsession. Mm. <laughs> She's really, obviously, my ex-husband and I had cars, um, but she is mine, and um, she's my first car, and I absolutely adore her. Uh, and I only, you know, I just, I do, I just adore her. Mm. Um, there was a question Ooh, for you. Mike Cleesby, he's got a Peugeot five hundred eight station wagon. Massive load capacity, £20 a year road tax. That's less than Shemi. Yeah, that is. Shemi's 35 Yeah, which is nice. Crikey. Yeah. Uh, what do we get? Are uh, you going to buy Mini Miss Hubner a car? No. No, no, we haven't really got the funds for that. She has got a number plate, though. Yeah, she has got a number plate. She has plate. got a number plate. Because what we were thinking is, if we buy her the plate, we don't have the money to buy a car, but because of her name, we could buy a plate. Um, she can then put it on whatever she likes. Her first thought was, can I put it on Shemi? Mm. Ah, no. Ross White sent a link on Twitter for a petition to reduce the classic car tax from 40 years to 20 years. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm in mixed thoughts about that. Because um, I, I don't think they're going to do it on environmental grounds for the most part. They don't want people driving around in old cars. But um, the other concern is, and I had this concern with the free tax for classics, so far we've been okay, but what if they start restricting it? In some countries, especially across Europe, Netherlands been an example, uh, if you opt for classic um, road tax, you're not allowed to use the car all year. Uh, because you're like, okay, you've got your free tax, but you're preserving that car, so you're not going to drive it through the winter, which I kind of understand. So there is a little bit of be careful what you wish for with it. 
Um, and obviously, it makes a huge difference to me because most of my cars um, fall in that um, between 20 and 40 age bracket. And uh, even the two CV is over £200 a year to tax now. You're right, Which, given Paige. I'm doing 2,000 miles a year in the 2CV at I the moment. I do need to do a video Shameful. about me and Chevy. <laughs> yeah, not good. Sorry, we are uh, overlapping. Griff, Griff has a personal plate. Uh, G22YPH. Very mm-hmm. cool. Very yeah, we cool. saw that. Uh, so, Cleo's name is Cleo. And uh, Matt Pink pointed us in the direction of the, the DVS, DVL, whichever website. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we got Cleo, which is her name, hey. Yeah. For a minimal price. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one's cottoned on to the value of those so please now cotton on and then we can just sell it <laughs> millionaires millionaires by the summer um sid 3300 says i'm getting slightly annoyed that people are fear-mongering over classic cars getting banned there's a few youtubers doing it who i won't name yeah, and yeah. we've talked about that legislation and it's not a ban at all it's purely for end-of-life cars because there are millions of end-of-life cars that disappear yeah, um, it, it's about clarifying what they are. It's not saying they all automatically become this. No. But, um, I mean, f- for sure, we need to keep an eye on what parliaments variously are doing because um, they can get wrong ideas. There was talk of um, compulsory tax on any vehicle. So even if you had a pile of bits in your shed, you would have to pay road tax for that. That got shut down by various lobby groups in the UK, uh, Federation of British Historic Vehicle Clubs being one of them. Uh, so for sure we need to keep an eye on what they're doing because not everything they do is good but uh, that one does seem a lot of fuss about nothing uh, <laughs> uh, in our opinion but it is an opinion that was um oh. in Soros spend many hours reading very very boring documents yes it was very boring uh mopedas elodie who's a city bug is 20 pounds mm. There That's interesting, go. because yeah. Jimmy, they've got similar engines. Similar engines. Well, not that similar. They're both Daihatsu Origin. Yeah. But I, I think the, um, I forget what the engine code is for the um, chain-driven uh, one litre and the Igo and everything. Uh, that That's kind of the next generation engine. So it's designed to be even more efficient. Peter Van Heck asks, ever thought you'd be at 112k in? No, <laughs> never thought that for one minute when I started doing this channel um, o- over 10 years ago. Blimey. Jeepers. Which is why my hair is a lot more grey than it was back then. Oh. Mm. I think it's uh, distinguished. Oh, distinguished. distinguished. Salt, salt and pepper, am yes, I now? Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. That's why I shave the sides off, just to try and keep the grey in some sort of check. Con Hamilton, Colin Hamilton says, do you think road pricing will ever be brought in to replace road tax? I mean, it's, it's, it's entirely it feasible. Every now and yeah, then, yeah, isn't it? yeah. I, I, I can see that will come in because if there's more cars, electric cars pay no road tax, um, then where, where does the income come from? It's not actually road tax. I'm just saying road tax. No, it says Giselle is almost forty. Uh, it's forty almost. Helena is thirty. Cracky. Mm. It's mad. Like. You don't think of these as old cars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. <laughs> uh, uh, Indecisive <laughs> also is asking me very geeky questions about Mark 1 BX mirrors. And uh, I'm struggling to remember. I drove a Mark 1 BX around quite a lot of New Zealand as well. I don't remember the mirrors being anything um, particularly um, notable. So I, I don't remember any problem with them. Um, so, yeah, what's going on with yours? I don't know. I don't know if that's normal or not. Uh, need to find another BX Mark 1. There were loads of them at the weekend. That was your <laughs> opportunity. There were two Mark 1 GTs. He was Rastor. busy filming and being sociable. Well, that serves you right. <laughs> he was going to be anti-social. No, you know, no. no, we spent all this life telling people <laughs> to be sociable and then you're like, yeah, don't, yeah. don't be it sociable. It is a problem. There were many, many people I wanted to it's speak to at Rustable. And uh, I just didn't. I will say, I think the Mark 2 BX mirrors are better than the Mark 1 the Mark 1 mirrors look nicer. Mm-hmm. Uh, is the BX from New Zealand still going? I don't know. Um, I should probably check. I can't remember what the reg number was. Uh, but there is um, a website you can go to in New Zealand, Car Jam, I think it is. Oh. And uh, you can check whether a car is still on the road. 351,000 kilometres it had done when I stopped driving it. But my friend who it belonged to, he sold it and then it was sold again. And after that, I don't know. 
Um, oh yes, they, they are going to start charging uh, road tax um, on EVs. I forgot that was a change oh, in the last budget. Not huge amounts, but something. And there's more and more of them. Uh, the BX was NC434. Right, let's do this. I'm going to go and have a look. Oh, you're going to break stuff. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, ah, right. What, hello, what? Fox Hands Follies. What was that plate again? Thank you for bringing your Siri on. Where's it gone? NC434. NC434. Scoot him up, it says. I had great fun going through the Raspberry videos, taking stills out of Elsie, my Mark II Yaris. I think lots of people are doing that. Yeah. It's lovely. I think there was pictures of just about every car um, that was there, and there were a lot of cars there. And I think Shemi was so proud of herself to be there. She yeah, was yeah. glowing. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to find out if it's on the road. <laughs> Our Lord Bungle, I love your way with words. Anyone else find themselves tripping over rocking horse poop and hen's teeth at Rustaville? I spotted a few unicorns. Yeah, there definitely were. The um, Fiat, oh, I cannot say this word. Oh, it's still got a warrant Ulis, of fitness. For example. Oh, good. it's alive. The BX is alive. Yep, so that, that's good. Um, the warrant of fitness will be every six months for that car in New Zealand. They're quite harsh. So, again, be careful what you wish for because they might go, okay, you can use your older car, but now we're going to test you more. Um, so it was first registered in April 1987. That's how long it took BXs to get to New Zealand because we were well into Mark IIs by then. So there we go. That's the power of the internet. Thank you, New Zealand, for having such good information. The BX is still out there. <laughs> Not a Ghoulies. A, mm -hmm. a, a Ulysse. 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 Yeah, Ulysse. <laughs> it was the... Um, gosh. Brain's gone completely. Kaputski. It's been a busy day. Uh, they were only out there for about one or two years, weren't they? Yeah. And it's yeah. the same as the Citroen Synergy. Yeah, Synergy is quite mm. rare. And there also. was a Synergy as well. There was. So, yeah, it was um, impressive that we had the two there. Mm -hmm. uh, have you looked at Betty's end at uh, New Zealand Plate? I haven't recently, but uh, it should show that her warrant of fitness has expired. I'm not sure if it shows if she's been um, um, exported. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, Citroen Evasion. She left. I think it was what the synergy was called in other ah. markets. Like the um, expert was the Jumpy. Okay. But they decided <laughs> we can't have a van called Jumpy in England. <laughs> so it became the expert, I think. Yeah, very good point. No, dispatch, Everything. sorry. Peugeot expert. Everything was welcome at uh, Rustaville, and mm -hmm. it was beautiful that it was. It was just wonderful. I keep using all these superlatives to say how wonderful it was it really yeah. was incredible oh light bulb fun too. we haven't had much talk talk only that we haven't done anything with mm -hmm. poor talk mm -hmm. oh, I got it. yeah dispatch was called the jumpy thank you for the correction there james uh indecisive has the new exhaust on betty sounds glorious yeah it does sound very really good. really smooth very good. still got the up and down patented silence and delete Mathieu um, so it sounds very says, nice. my dad wanted a citroen evasion evasion and came home with a Pontiac Transport. Cool. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, did a transport test a few years ago. Uh, Ivy, I've heard rumours that Ima cars have been clocked at up to 90 miles oh. an hour. Uh, I don't think that's possible. Do not do that. Yeah, I think do even with a bigger that. engine, I think you just run out of gearing. Uh, I've had took up to a sat-nav confirmed 70, and believe me, the engine's screaming by that point. <laughs> Moses... Wait, City Bucks have a Daihatsu-based engine. Go send you on the interwebs for an Intel-style Daihatsu inside sticker. Yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, never understood what if it Ritmo was called Strada in the UK. Again, it's one of those weird things where it was just like Ritmo. We don't like it. We'll call mm. it Strada instead. Uh, there's quite a few things. The Yugo Sana was the Florida everywhere else, but the Sana to us, uh, very strange. Some sometimes it's. Um, comes about because a name is already claimed by another manufacturer. But uh, I'm trying to think of other name changes. There's, there's plenty of name changes. Um, the most famous one, Toyota MR2 in <laughs> France, was just sold as the MR. If Pajero. you speak French, you can probably work that out. Pajero. Yeah, that's a big <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Allegro was regent in Italy, but the Allegro was also built by Innocenti. It was an Innocenti regent. But, yeah, they didn't call it an Innocenti Allegro. So, um, yeah, that, that um, is is a fact. Why did the US call the Mondeo the Fusion? Yes. And then we had the Ford Fusion in the UK entirely different. Oh, do you know what? Just going back to Russell again. That 
American import escort. Oh yeah, through people. Yeah, it was brilliant because it was not very far from me, so I could see it and I could see people going. Yeah, I've known the owner of that car for years. I must get a task. It lives in Wales. It needs to happen. But is it that everybody's like, it's a Ford? Yeah, yeah. But what, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> Have you spent more than £190 on Chevy since you bought it? Yes. Very, very, very yes. yes. <laughs> but I st are, we, are we still under a grand in total, do you think? Uh, I mean, the engine was £200. We spent more for the engine good. than the car. Uh, the welding work got quite expensive. Yeah, no, it's 685 Um... She might still be under a grand. Yeah. And if you go and look on eBay, they're going for silly money at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Silly, silly money. So we're going to sell Chevy. No, for we're not going to no. sell Chevy. Oh. That's not what's happening. But I want some silly money. No. Rude. Uh, Dame of the Dart was called the SP250, yeah, because Dodge had the Dart name. Yeah, similar with the Volvo Amazon. The Volvo Amazon, um, I think that was an American manufacturer again, said, whoa, 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 that's our name. So it's it's called the Amazon. It's known as the Amazon, the same as the Daimlers are known as Darts, but never officially. Oh, right, family. Best and worst cars you've ever bought. Um, <laughs> <Are they? sighs> I've got to think of a good one. And Lexus oh. was a high point. I did like the Lexus. You've got to think of a good one. Yeah. You've had good car, Ellie. Yeah, yeah. Ellie must go down. I think I quite like Tuck. Ellie. I haven't got rid of her. Took. Yeah. Yeah. So I was trying to think more of cars I haven't got now. Betty? It's all right. Poor Betty's still worn out. We've got Chevy? new dampers to fit to Betty. Must get that done. Yes. Uh, she's... How long is this going on for? Because we're, 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 we're at an hour and a half. Near Ooh. enough. And I need to go off on a collection caper. Yes. To go of and collect, children. Uh, of go children. Go and collect the Hublet. Sorry, I don't know what I was saying. Uh, Hublet collection, not capers. Um, so, yeah. Um, Sid says, worst Camry or multipler? Camry, yes. Multipler brought joy. The multipler just brought joy. The Camry had twin rear wipers. Oh, though. don't. I would even. just sit in the unit with the rear wipers going. Yeah, because he's in disgrace and that's where he has to be. Yes. <laughs> they, they were both bad. The, the Fiat, no, that... the Fiat, the Fiat could have been so good. Uh, if mechanically it wasn't yeah, ruined. Yeah. That was the big problem. It wasn't the stupid green interior or the chrome pink wrap. The problem was it was absolutely worn out, which is why it's now sadly been scrapped. Uh, somebody was asking. Right, are you going to carry on while I about disappear? The best. I think probably an hour and a half. Well, do you think that's enough? It's probably enough. Let's see what the comments are. No, because the comments will have us talking here. <laughs> I know, they're here, like, kitsch, they talking all night. night. Like, no, you come we're back dead. to the children and I'll still be here. Oh, Double Zero Garage has just turned up for us to go goodbye. Oh, oh, I'm very, no. very sorry. Oh, no. Um, yeah, uh, Took is amazing. Yeah, Took is amazing. She just sits there and sits there, and then we finally get her out for an adventure, and off she goes, happy as Larry. But yeah, I think we are going to wrap this one up. I need to go and jump in Giselle. And I will Ooh, get Giselle, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, go and pick up the Hublets. And I, I hope will she get starts. the oven on, and uh, we, we'll have some dinner. Yeah, that'll yeah. be good as well. Cause I'm and those started. brownies. Now yeah, we've yeah. got to work out how to eat the brownies without the children's mm, eating. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, thank you, everyone. Thank um, you, everybody. Someone was asking it. about donations. You can actually donate through the Hubnut store. Oh. So if you go to hubnut.org, as well as buying lovely, lovely merchandise, including the pink chamois shirts and yeah, myrtle yeah. shirts, um, there is a donate option through there. That That's probably the most efficient way to get money to us. We kind of don't mind YouTube taking their cut because they allow us to do this. Mm -hmm. They allow us to broadcast all around the world so it's very very kind of them but We've um a, yeah if, if you want to do it directly you can do directly through the store but just buy some merchandise we like sending the merchandise so yeah we've got some lovely new stuff we've got the fleet t-shirts we've got the pink yeah. chemis gray fleet t-shirts we should have them here to show you look at these lovely gray shirts they were at rustable for the very first time quite a few people bought them yeah um but yeah we're, we're gonna have to go i think so thank you very much folks and uh, we shall see you in a future live chat yes. or video or something. So hopefully Giselle's Awakening will be the Sunday video. And uh, Bye. Say, thank goodbye. you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye. Where's the button? There's the I button. I don't know where the button is. <laughs> Bye. Oof. <laughs>